first off, satellite remote sensing has got a long way to go yet. We are just now beginning, and in fact, in my work here at BGSU, I have just in the last seven or eight years started mapping um, slight differences in chemical composition that are important, like phycocyanin and cyanobacteria. That has spawned a company called Blue Water Satellite Incorporated here in Bowling Green. It has licensed the patent for that algorithm that takes satellite data and, and produces an image that shows where the sound of bacteria are. And um, so they, they're paying the university royalties. A new company has started here, and it's, you know, it's helping the economy in the area. But besides that, we are now mapping phosphate content in the water. We are mapping sulfate content in the water. Um, we're mapping turbidity, all this from satellite. On land, we're mapping phosphate in the soil. Farmers now pay good money to have people go out and collect one soil sample every acre, send it off to a lab and determine how much phosphate's in it. We can do that for every fifth of an acre, because that's what a 30 meter pixel is. 30 meter by 30 meter pixel is one fifth of an acre. This is important to know for two big reasons. The price of phosphate's gone way up, so uh, that means that the farmer will know where to apply it where it's needed and not to apply it where it's not needed. Well, that saves the farmer money right off the bat, and we can do it cheaper from satellite than they can do it by land methods, right? That's number one. But the big winner is Lake Erie because as this phosphate runs off and gets into Lake Erie, that causes more cyanobacterial blooms, and they're sometimes toxic. And, and offer a threat to public health for people living in and near the lake. So um, it's a win-win situation if we can curtail the amount of phosphate going down, and it should be curtailed where there's enough already.